Hello everyone and welcome to a quick Unity tutorial on how to make a quick sky gradient shader with the shader graph. Today we're gonna see how to use Unity's modern node-based editor to create a basic shader for a background sky gradient with adjustable top and bottom colors and even some bloom effect. So let's dive in. Before we dive into this example of a simple graph created shader, let's just do some quick reminders on how to set up your project if you want to follow along. First of all, the shader node based editor, called the shader graph, is only available in Unity 2019 and later, because it requires your project to use one of the new scriptable render pipelines, i.e. URP or HGRP. Today, we're gonna stick with the universal render pipeline to make something as cross-platform compatible as possible. Once the project is ready, you'll notice that now, when you right-click in the project doc to create a new asset, in addition to the normal shader menu, you also have the shader graph one. While you can still write your own shader code by hand with the new pipelines, using the shader graph is usually the recommended way to create your shaders because it's more intuitive, gives instant feedback at each step of the creation process, and avoids all the imposing boilerplate of shader lab scripts. So this is the menu we're gonna use for a little sky gradient shader example. Okay, let's get to it. In this menu, you see that we have several types of presets for a new shader graph based shader asset. First, we'll go for a URP shader preset to ensure we're using this new pipeline with all its cool optimizations and features. Then, because we want to create a sky gradient to use as a background for a scene, we won't have any shadows or volume effects, so we can use the URP Unlit Shader preset. This will create a new asset in the project that I'll name Sky Gradient, and then if I double click on it, I'll have a new window, the Shader Graph. I can dock it anywhere in my Unity layout, and I can use the buttons in the top right corner to toggle the two additional Blackboard and Graph Inspector internal panels. In short, the blackboard is where we defined our exposed variables, the one that show up in the inspector of a material using our shader, and the graph inspector allows us to tweak the parameters of our graph, the currently selected node, or the currently selected variable, if there is one. Actually, because our shader is meant to be used on backgrounds, we can go ahead and open the graph settings to disable the cast shadows property to avoid unnecessary computations, and then save our asset with the Save Assets button in the top left corner. The last thing we can do to finish up preparing our scene is right click on the shader and create a new material based on it, and then apply this material on a 3D plane in our scene. So remember that for my sky gradient shader, I want to use two colors, one at the top and one at the bottom, and then I want to blend between them along the vertical axis to get a gradient. So first of all, let's add two parameters to our shader, the top color and the bottom color. Both are variables of type color, and we can give them some defaults like white and black. Now, if I click and drag those variables to the area in the middle, you see that it auto-creates nodes with those dynamic values. For example, if I connect my top color variable directly to the base color output and save my shader assets, then after it's done recompiling, you'll notice that the plane takes the default white color. I also have new controls in my materials inspector that allow me to change my two parameters, and if I modify the top color value, then the plane changes color. To actually do my gradient blending, I just have to use the URP built-in node lerp. This node has three entries. A is the start value, so here my bottom color, B is the end value, here my top color, and T is the interpolation value between 0 and 1. Because here we want it to depend on where we are along the vertical axis in our object, we can actually use a nice and already normalized value in the case of a plane, which is the Y UV coordinate. This goes from x equals 0, y equals 0 in the bottom left corner of the plane, to x equals 1, y equals 1 in the top right corner, so we just need to isolate our y component and use it for the gradient interpolation factor. We can do that by splitting this vector 4 into 4 separate float values, and then picking just the green channel, i.e. the second dimension which corresponds to the y-axis, and inputting that into the t input of the lerp node. 
Finally, we just have to replace our top color by the LUP output in the base color slot, and if we resave, we see that we have a cool, easy to set up and to customize sky gradient shader. Note that if you want to use the exact same effects in your UI, you can actually do it quite easily from there. You just have to go back to the shader graph, turn it into a sprite unlit shader, and then when you create a new image with just a blank color and an empty sprite, you see that you have this material slot where you can drag the material we just created. And there you go, you just get the same effect but into the new UI. As a bonus, if you want your background sky to illuminate your scene with some glowing effect, you can also use some HDR colors and post-processing effects. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, and it's a way to define colors that, in addition to the usual red, green, blue and alpha values, also have an additional property, the intensity. We can change the mode of our top color and bottom color parameters easily by opening the graph inspector, selecting our parameters in the blackboard, and setting the modes to HDR. Now, if I re-edit my colors in the inspector, you'll notice that I have some new settings at the bottom to change the intensity, either with large increments or with a slider. However, if I boost my intensity, there isn't any real difference, except that the object goes white. That's because at the moment, there is no post-processing system in our scene to interpret the light intensity as a glow. To do this, we need to first add a new empty object and then give it a volume component. This allows us to quickly create scene-wide or local post-processing thanks to URP's predefined post-processing components. In our case, we want to add the bloom one. As soon as I enable it, you'll see that all this intensity I crunched up earlier is transformed into a blur of light and glows. Of course, we should now go back and readjust it slightly, but all in all, it makes for a cool dreamy effect, and we now have a quick way to create a nice ambience for our scene. So here you are, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial about Unity shaders, and that you enjoyed making this simple sky gradient effect. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and of course, if you have other ideas of Unity tricks that you'd like to learn, don't hesitate to leave a comment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and see you soon for more videos on coding and games.